Joining me now is someone who knows about knows a little bit about questioning a president under investigation. Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel under Ken Starr. Saul, welcome back. Thanks. Great to be here. Let me just start simply with this. It, it first, I went through. We we put together a little timeline here. We are on is in January is when the Times first reported, and at that time, John Dowd, Ty Cobb were the lead counsel for the president. That they've been trying to negotiate some form of an interview right. and parameters of it. We are now in August, and it's always like. Um, I'll gladly pay you a quarter tomorrow um, if we continue these negotiations today. Why? Well, I think a lot of people don't realize that um, if Bob Mueller goes into court to try to force the president to issue a subpoena, mm -hmm. the president's team challenges it, and Mueller goes into court to enforce it, it is not at all a gimme that he wins. This is not exactly a situation like it was in Watergate with U.S. versus Nixon, because there you had... Uh, both Cox and Jaworski, there were two separate tapes cases, mm -hmm. they, they had very narrow subpoenas, they knew exactly what tapes they wanted, and they already knew the tapes existed and that there were incriminatory conversations potentially on them. Mueller is not in nearly as strong of a legal position. He may not win if he goes in. So it's a game of chicken here? It's, it seems as if the Trump folks don't want the bad PR of looking like they're fighting a subpoena. And Mueller was like, well, if I go down that road and I don't win, then what? So is it a game of, is that why these are sort of, why it feels like this is dragging? Because nobody's afraid to say no? <laughs> I think it's partly a game of chicken, but also the danger for President Trump's team is that the longer it takes, since it's going to be difficult for Mueller anyway, I think, to win, the longer it takes, uh, Mueller presumably is gathering evidence all the time, and he might be in a much stronger position to go in at a later time. Is there parameters? Look, you, you, had a, you dealt with a president that was trying to lay, set parameters on what, you know, it's actions in office versus actions out of office. I've always thought if, if Trump's team tries to say, hey, you can't, not while he's president, one, so that was the argument for not asking about the obstruction part. You could say, well, that's his actions as president. But could, would Mueller be on higher ground if he said, I'm trying to interview about your actions before you were president? Does that make his case of subpoenaing easier? It makes his case easier of prevailing against the claim of executive privilege. Okay. Because you're at the height of presidential powers when you're dealing with presidential communications. Mm -hmm. There's a 1997 case from the D.C. Circuit. That's the controlling law okay. that says if you want to get presidential communications and overcome executive privilege claim, it's got to be very important evidence to you. Right. And you basically, it, you have to be able to say, we can't get this anywhere else. And Is an interview with the president fall under, I, 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 it's an interview with the president. Does that fall under that? In your sense, that's a presidential communication, in well, essence, that you're trying to get your hands on? Well, no. The, que the question is, is Mueller, from, from my understanding of the questions, yeah. he, he was, he's talking about what were you thinking right. when, you, when you, you know, sent this demand to Jeff Sessions? What were you thinking right. when you said this to Jim Comey? That's presidential communication. So that would be communication. In that sense, even it's, though it's, it's, a, it's not written down anywhere, it's a, it's a thought in your head. Well, it's a thought, it is, but it's, it's, so it goes to the heart of presidential decision making, and it's also communications. So if Mueller says, then fine, I'm not going to question your obstruction for now, but I need to know this answer about the Trump Tower meeting and this answer about what Jared Kushner did or this answer here in the run up. Um, at that point, does this then does does it make it that much harder for the president's team to fight this subpoena? It makes it harder. But in these situations, in these executive privilege mm -hmm. claims and counterclaims, uh, there are no blanket assertions that are, you can't. The president can't make a blanket assertion. And, and Mueller can't say can't make a blanket assertion and say we, we demand we need all of this just because we're running a, an, really a criminal it? investigation. So he needs to say in each instance, mm -hmm. this is why I need to find out about the Trump Tower meeting. And he's in a much stronger position there. Uh, you know, before the election. On the obstruction part, does he really need the president? I mean, he's putting together a, it looks like they're widening it out with the tweets, connecting actions. They have testimony of potentially of Reince Priebus and Don McGahn of saying when they briefed him, for instance, on when did they, when did the president find out Michael Flynn was under investigation, things like that. They have all of this other evidence. Does he actually need the president? Or, or well, is it just a nice addition? I think he needs the president because I think he doesn't have a very strong obstruction you case. Okay. In my view, the idea that the firing of Comey is an obstruction of justice, even if he fired him, 
to protect himself mm -hmm. is not a, a correct explanation uh, analysis of the current law. So I think he has a, unless he's got something else, unless he's got hush money, you know, dangling pardons in exchange for somebody not telling something the more truth. than just sentiment. Type of yes, thing. and I think uh, really that all goes back to, it's not directly on point, but the Arthur Anderson case, which the Mueller team should know about because Andrew sure. Weissman was the prosecutor. Supreme Court, nine to nothing in that case, rejected Andrew Weissman's broad view of, of what corrupt, uh, corrupt conduct is in the context of an obstruction statute. That's a 9-0 opinion. Interesting. Let me ask you this. How would you go about getting this interview? What would, would you're seeing what, or, or try to put yourself inside, try to help us, of how is Mueller going about this? Would you be doing this the same way they're doing it, or, or would you have a different strategy to get the president to sit down with you? If he really wants him to sit down, I think he's doing the right thing because he's, he's waiting and he's gathering evidence. So the longer he waits, he actually gets, gets more evidence. Mm -hmm. And also he's in a position to say, I've been very patient with right. this president. Then he issues the subpoena. Even if Trump ultimately wins in court or delays things in court, no president likes to be saying, I'm defying a subpoena. It doesn't look good. That's why when we subpoenaed finally President Clinton, mm -hmm. he immediately said, okay, I'll come talk, but I need you to withdraw that subpoena. So it, it won't look good. But it is like, ultimately, is your guess that if, do you think this happens? Do you think the president ultimately agrees to it? Do you think Mueller ultimately has to essentially threaten, issue the subpoena? I don't think he'll ever talk to Bob Mueller. And if I were his attorney, I would urge him not to talk to Bob Mueller, particularly about obstruction, because it's a lot easier to prove that you lied to a law enforcement officer than to prove obstruction of justice. All right. Saul Weisenberg uh, giving us a lot of wisdom today. Thank you, sir. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.